Welcome to our course on building out a JavaScript quiz. So this is going to be a practical guide to building out this type of quiz within JavaScript and only using strict JavaScript. I'm going to show you all the building blocks that you need to build out this type of quiz as well as we're going to be going over much of the JavaScript syntax and what it does in order to accomplish this type of code. My name is Lawrence and I've been a web developer for over 14 years and I use JavaScript on a regular basis. I created several JavaScript courses and I decided to create one that would be more of a real-life type example. Throughout my career I've had to create many quizzes and many quiz type applications just using JavaScript. I'm going to walk you through how to create this type of quiz just using JavaScript. It's encouraged that uh, we're going to include the source files for this code and it is encouraged that you download that and work along with the instruction and the lessons provided within this course. I'm also going to be using console log quite a bit as well as uh, to write out the code and show you the code within the course as we're going through it. So this is the code that's available within this course. Feel free to work with it as need be. Uh, so also just going back to it, so here we've got the console. So we're going to be doing quite a bit of communicating back and forth from the source code into the console in order to highlight what's actually happening within the code. Uh, so we'll be going through that within the course as well. Advisable that you watch this course within with the HD turned on because uh, there's going to be quite a lot of text writing uh, and that we're going to be going over. So it is important that you're able to actually uh, read and make out uh, what the syntax is that we're using. And as well, we're going to be reading that off and going over it. Also encourage that if you do have any questions that you do post them within this course and we're going to promptly be answering them as we see them coming in. Thanks again for becoming one of the students of the JavaScript How to Make a JavaScript Quiz course. Welcome to our JavaScript quiz project. Within this project we're going to be going over everything you need to know to be able to create your own quizzes using JavaScript, CSS styling, and HTML. We're also going to be building this project within Bootstrap. So this is a CSS, HTML, JavaScript framework, and this is going to make our quiz look really nice as well as be mobile responsive. So, so far within this course, what we've done is we've set up a basic frame. So this is just going to be a regular HTML frame. We've got our Bootstrap CDN here. Uh, so the CDN is just access to the Bootstrap library, CSS library. What we have done is gone over to Bootstrap, CDN, taken the HTML, copied it, and pasted it within our project. Without this, our project is going to look a little bit different, and we're going to lose that Bootstrap styling. So we want to keep the bootstrap styling in, so we're going to keep that CDN visible within our project. Uh, so we've set up an area for our CSS, so we've got the style open and close, as well as we've got our JavaScript open and close. Uh, so then we've got our regular HTML here, we've got body, and we've set up our first div that we're going to be using that's going to contain the entire quiz. And we've just used a standard class from Bootstrap to call it container. And then we've just typed in some text here that says, Welcome to my quiz. So this, all together, all of this code, uh, what it's really doing is it's just giving you this Welcome to my quiz on your web page so far. And the outline of this project is going to be to use JavaScript to control the movement between the quiz so we're not actually going to be refreshing to new pages this is all going to be self-contained on one page so there's going to be no page refreshes if we were to build this quiz out in html we could do that 
but we would have to have separate pages with each question of the quiz and uh, it would make it a little bit more difficult to track. Uh, we wouldn't be able to track it in JavaScript as easily and uh, moving the content across. So the objective of this of this course is going to be to create this quiz that's going to be a JavaScript quiz where the user can answer a bunch of questions, get evaluated on those questions, and see a result on their last on their last page. And it's not actually going to submit. Uh, it's not actually going to move through any pages, refreshing pages. It's all going to be done in JavaScript, as well as the evaluation about the answers to check if they're right or wrong. So we're going to have a whole bunch of series of questions, and the user is going to be able to move through there and get a result on how they did on the quiz instantly using our JavaScript. We're going to use JavaScript arrays in order to store the answers and check the answers as the users are moving through. And we're going to use styling minimally to do some styling for the, the page itself. Uh, so some things that are not available within Bootstrap or we might be setting up our own uh, depending on what we need for this quiz. And the bulk of the coding is going to be sitting between the script tags and we've just got our script tags here at the top. Normally what we would do is we would tie it to a JavaScript file, uh, but in order for this course, we're gonna be keeping everything on one page. So whenever you're ready, uh, let's begin building out our pages. The first, uh, the first thing that we're gonna build out is the navigation of all the different pages. Then we're gonna add in the questions uh, onto the pages. Uh, so we wanna build out that navigation where we could go previous, next, and move through them. Uh, so we're going to build out a couple buttons, uh, previous and next. Obviously for the first question, we're not going to have a previous. Uh, so if it's going to equal zero or the page is going to be zero, uh, we're not going to show that. And then we're going to allow the user to move through. And once the user moves to the last page, uh, then we're going to calculate out all the results and we're going to show the user their score. Within this lesson, we're going to be going over how to set up the initial frame of your quiz. Uh, so what we've done here is we've just done a little bit of styling. We've added in some HTML. So there's no JavaScript yet within the functionality here. Uh, so we're going to add event listeners onto these buttons here. And uh, then these are going to be our possible answers. So we're also going to add some listeners there. Uh, in order to be able to track when someone clicks through those uh, those buttons there and uh, pull out the information for the button uh, and then also we need to have question and question information and between every single uh, when we're actually uh, changing the questions here we're going to be changing the answers as well so we're going to have within this project we're going to have five questions and what we want to happen here is when someone places an answer they can move next uh, and if possible if there are no pages before that they can do previous so we're going to have to hide this only leave the next and uh, the next is going to have a little bit of javascript there to validate to make sure that one of these answers has been selected in order to move next uh, so just uh, we're going to be doing validation along the course of the quiz so when we look at the code for this so here we have our bootstrap cdn so that's what we brought in and that's what allows us to have these really cool buttons it's built in within bootstrap and as you can see it really does save you a lot of time when you're creating these types of projects because without the bootstrap i'll just show you what this is going to look like uh, we lose quite a bit of the styling and when I refresh that, you see that we don't really have all that uh, that nice styling. But with the Bootstrap, it's already got a lot of built-in CSS. And if you are using, uh, if you are open to using it, it's really great front-end framework. And as you can see here, it allows you for mobile as well to scale really easily. Uh, so this is what this quiz would look like on a mobile device. And we've got nice big buttons here for the answers to click through, and then nice big buttons here at the bottom for the next buttons. So after that, uh, we did a little bit of styling here for uh, column SM6. So that's, uh, that's what we're using for all of these, all the answers. 
Uh, so we had to do a little bit of styling where we put a border around it, a one pixel border. We had to color it uh, just so that they stand out a little bit more. And we're going to be making some additional adjustments to that as this course continues along. Uh, but just for now, just so that we do have a framework, uh, a frame laid out, a structure to our quiz. Uh, so it looks all really nice and we can begin programming the code and working with it. Uh, then we have our padding. Uh, so we added additional padding beyond what Bootstrap is providing for the answers for the questions. Uh, we added an additional um, page movement class. Uh, so this is just something that we, we created in order to have a little bit of spacing here between these buttons and the answers. Uh, so this is all that this is doing is giving us 25 picks of space between uh, the answers and these buttons here at the bottom. Uh, when you are designing for mobile, always keep in mind that you do want to have some spacing between buttons as when it gets on a mobile screen, uh, you don't really want to have one next to the other. Uh, so for these answers, it's going to be, we're going to place buttons in here as well. But we do want to always keep in mind that we want to keep things separated as much as possible. So that's why we had moved it down 25 picks. So even on a mobile device, uh, you're not going to hitting, you're not going to be hitting any of these accidentally. Uh, and then when we go down, so this is just our header here, uh, H1 tags, welcome to my quiz. Uh, below that, we added in a row. So this is a row of questions. Uh, we're actually going to put another div around here because uh, this is actually what's going to be changing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just reformat that a little bit. And then we have our next uh, row here, which is going to contain the answers to the questions. Uh, so we've got all of our answers here. And as you go down, you can see that um, allocating spacing for four different answers. And then we're going to allow the clicking of these answers to click through uh, to, to be able to select to answer the question. And then we're going to do our JavaScript validation to check if the answer is correct. Uh, here we have our row page movement. Uh, so this is the one that we moved down. And we see we added in a couple buttons here. And we offset it by four. So there's spacing between the buttons. I'm going to make one quick update to this. Uh, this is going to be a bootstrap thing. So that when it does shrink down, it's going to be five, uh, two, instead of um, four, four, and four. So I'm just going to make that adjust. And so I just updated that. So when we do resize it, I'm going to refresh that. And this gives us the ability to have slightly bigger buttons uh, for the smaller screens, which is going to really help out when some people are trying to click through on them. Uh, so this is our setup uh, so far. So we've just done the central frame of it. Uh, and now we're going to be able to work with um, changing the pages and updating the questions. Uh, now in the next coming upcoming lessons, so there's going to always a few different ways to do coding. Uh, so there's some ways to do uh, some dynamic HTML or we could uh, actually program these um, as separate divs, hide them and show them as needed. Uh, so that's the route that we're going to be going. We're just going to be hiding and showing the different uh, the different uh, questions, different pages as needed and moving through the next. Uh, so there are also, as I said, there are different ways to do this. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also uh, do the inner HTML and change these answers and questions. But that's going to be a little bit more work and uh, a little bit more intensive on JavaScript. Uh, so this is one of those situations where you have to kind of choose what the best approach is going to be and what the most efficient way is going to be. Uh, so sometimes when you're writing out JavaScript you, uh, and you want to do it that way where we're changing the inner HTML from an array, uh, that is possible as well. And um, it's going to make it more dynamic. Uh, but uh, it's, it's also going to save on the HTML code, but it'll expand on what we're going to need for the regular uh, JavaScript as well as the arrays that we're going to have to build out for that. Uh, so this is one of those areas where you make a choice and then you kind of develop out uh, depending on what you've selected. So in the last lesson we looked at how to add and remove classes uh, and then we were tying these buttons depending on what the class was it was changing the information on the quiz. Uh, so we're doing 
something different right now is that we're tying this within an array. So these values that are changing are actually array based. And this is actually going to make it easiest, easier for us to scale and build out this quiz if we add a whole bunch of questions. So now looking at the code, you can see that, the, that it's, there's a lot less HTML code and the actual data is being held within this array. So it's a multi-dimensional array, it's called my quiz. And we've got the question, we've got the first uh, available answer, second, third, fourth, and then we've got the, a value for the correct answer. So we've, breaking, we've broken all of this up within an array, and then this is a multi-dimensional array so we can get access to it. So we know that as we move through the pages, we're going to have access to different sets of questions with uh, different values and answers. And this is going to be a lot easier to control for us. And if we just wanted to add additional questions, it would be as easy as just copying out the race uh, format and then just typing in another question and then having four possible answers and then indicating which is going to be the correct answer. And this is all separated by a comment. Uh, so we could indefinitely create a whole bunch of uh, values within this array in order to make our quiz longer and scale it up. So this is one of the benefits of using arrays because we can hold all that information within the array as well as we've got the correct answer there and if there is a mistake we can edit it and easily change it. And we don't have to deal with a whole bunch of HTML code. It also saves us in styling. Uh, so if we do want to make some changes to the styling, uh, we want to add in additional row, another header, uh, that can very easily be done. Uh, whereas before we would have a whole bunch of these pages and if we want to make adjustments to one we'd have to make adjustments to the other as well and again it also it all depends on what type of quiz you're building so if you've got a bunch of different types of fields that you're asking for uh, you might have to be uh, you might have to do that where you're hiding uh, the next page and showing that additional page uh, so we're going to also look at that as well uh, in a little bit later on about different ways to do that. Uh, so for now we're going to be going through how to work with an array and attach all these values into the array um, from the array into the HTML. And when we look at the what else we've done here in the JavaScript, so we've added this uh, my question and it's getting element by ID questions so it's getting all of this information and over here we've added a header uh, so this makes it easy for us to I, use this ID and identify the inner HTML and change that because uh, we're going to have to change that as we move through the pages uh, and move through the array. And then what we added here as well, we did we ran this function as check page and as you can see we we have made some changes to this function where now we're just we're doing a couple console logs there but what we're doing is we're taking my header in HTML and we're setting the value getting that value from the multi-dimensional array my quiz and what this is doing current page we also started the page at zero because arrays are going to start at zero so it's a lot easier for us if we want to get a value of the current page to just add one uh, so this is more for a reader point of view that's readable uh, so the value will be one instead of zero and here we can still go ahead and use that current page as zero and we're going to return the first value within that uh, within that array so this is what we're going to return back and if we bring this out into the console we can uh, maneuver through that as well so when we go out to the page and we refresh it, you see that within the array, there's going to be six, there's two, there's two arrays within this multi-dimensional array, and each array contains six items, and there are all the different items that it's containing. And so the objective is going to be next to move all the questions, the possible answers to the questions within these fields. And we're already able to change the heading. So we just got to attach the same thing for the fields. Now there's going to be a few different ways we can approach this. Uh, we can do it in a similar fashion as we've done here, or we could, we could go through the DOM and return back all these elements and traverse the DOM and find out 
how we can get to the inner HTML of this class and see if that's more efficient or if we could just do it with the IDs and then just do ID 1, 2, 3, 4 and uh, wrap it up that way. So there's going to be two different ways we can approach this. Uh, so we're going to be going through those in the next lesson. So now that we've updated our quiz with JavaScript, we're going to be going through all the different JavaScript functionality. Uh, so we added in uh, event listeners for the buttons here, as well as for these buttons. And we've turned these into buttons as well. Uh, we've also added some text and some additional styling to the quiz. So that's how it's going to look when it resizes to a mobile screen and then this is going to be a tablet and then this is a desktop screen. And when we click the buttons we do see that we do have some actions here. Uh, next question, page 2, page 1, next, page 3, page 4, page 5, page 6. And we're going to control all of this through JavaScript. And as you can see the page isn't actually refreshing. It's just the JavaScript that's changing the inner HTML that's available within the quiz area. So when I refresh it, we've also added some event listeners to these classes. And it's just telling us basically what the answer is, because we're going to need that in order to validate it and determine if the answer is correct per question. So now that when we, uh, so we've looked at the quiz and we're just going to look at the coding now. Uh, so we have made some updates to the styling. Uh, so again here we've got the regular standard uh, call, call span. We've got a padding of 10. So that's giving us some padding around these uh, columns. We've got our page movement, so a margin top 25. So our page movement buttons are here at the bottom. And now we've updated the answers. So these are all the different answers. Uh, so they're all class answers. And what we've done is we've centered it. So margin left, margin right to center. We've done a display block. We've got a width of 80%. So we're not going to go full width on it. And we've given them a background of this color. So this is just a color so that we can tell them apart from the regular background. So it could be pretty much anything, any color that we want to use. And then below that, uh, we've got our container. Uh, so our container is going to encompass the whole body area there. So anything that's within the body there, we set up a div that's going to hold all of that HTML that we're going to work with for this quiz. And we've also split out the quiz pages. So what we're going to do, first we're going to create a bunch of pages. So page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, page 5 with questions. And we're going to hide the additional pages and then show them using JavaScript. And that's going to give us the ability to move through the pages. And then down here below we've got our JavaScript functionality that we've added in. And when you look at it, so these buttons, we've added event listeners. So this is how you add an event listener. We go get element by ID. So we have to identify those elements. So we've got button next is the ID. So we're adding event listeners. And this is why the JavaScript has to be at the bottom of the page as well, so that we can attach these event listeners to this button ID. Uh, so the HTML has to load, it loads into the DOM, and then the DOM is able to pick up that uh, this button, btn next, is getting an event listener added to it, and when this is clicked, it's going to run this function, which is just, we've just called it move next. And as well, we've done the same thing for the button previous ID. So the same thing, we've added an event listener when it's clicked, and we're going to move that back. And then just below here, we've got our functions. So we've got our move next function. And we're starting off our current page at 1. So this is going to give us moving through all the different pages of questions. Current page increases, current page decreases. And if you're not familiar with the uh, two plus signs, all this is doing, this is the same as doing current page plus 1. So it's just a shorter format of doing that. 
and then we've got the reverse here we've got the two negative signs which is doing the same the, the opposite thing where it's subtracting one from this value and then all we've done here uh, so this is more of just a placeholder we're not gonna we're gonna be removing these at uh, uh, the later lesson uh, so right now all we're doing is enter HTML and we've got current page value and this is just so that we can see that it actually is doing something when we're clicking the buttons uh, sometimes I prefer to use console log uh, so that's another way to kind of see what's happening within uh, within your code uh, so you could do like a console log and just do uh, the current page value and return that in and then when we refresh that you can see that when I do click that I get the current page value within there and then I know this is a value that I can work with within the rest of the JavaScript and work through that and in the next lesson we're going to be going over event listeners for classes so we set up the event listeners for ID and the event listeners for classes are going to be slightly different because we do have a whole bunch of elements that are going to hold the same class name uh, so we're going to go through that in the next lesson so we had talked about adding an event listener so that gave these buttons functionality so the other part of the quiz that we wanted to do we want to make these buttons clickable so we want the user to be able to come in and click the answer that's going to be the most appropriate answer uh, so we're going to list out all the different available answers uh, and this is going to work really well on mobile where the user can come in and they can click their their desired answer and uh, and get a result within JavaScript so there's a number of different ways to do this you could do it in buttons you could do it with radio buttons and those types of quizzes uh, it's it's the idea is going to be the same thing and the layout might be slightly different uh, but for this quiz we've chosen to use uh, bootstrap as its framework and we're using this uh, this kind of clickable answer type quiz format because uh, at the end of the day we're just trying to get all this information into JavaScript and then the JavaScript is going to do the processing and validation of whatever information we're clicking on and the answers that we're getting. Uh, so in the previous lesson we did talk about doing adding event listeners and we had added event listeners to each one of these buttons down here and they've got unique IDs so they were fairly easy to just go get element by ID select the ID name and add the event listener uh, and the event listener would be in a click so if this ID gets clicked then it's going to operate this function and then we listed out the functions here below so within this lesson we're going uh, if you notice that we don't have specific IDs well we do have um, these things that are called data IDs here within the answers and we're going to be getting to that uh, later as well about why we're calling a data ID and if you notice that the rest of the div it doesn't have any identifying ID all it is the only, the only thing that's tying it into the event listener is this class called answer and we're actually reusing the same class that we used here to do some styling in CSS uh, so I uh, generally you do want to avoid using this type of styling so actually I'm going to be changing that as well uh, but for right now we're just going to leave it at padding of 10 uh, so you want to try to avoid using the default bootstrap ones uh, but if if you have to um, it, you are able to use them in this format if you want to add some additional styling to those columns and the reason I say you should try to avoid it is if you've got a multiple page application and you've attached some kind of styling to it, you're calling to the same style sheet, uh, you don't want any confusion uh, somewhere down the line when someone's adding in, uh, working with it, adding in a bootstrap class and then they're all of a sudden getting this padding and they don't know where it's coming from so that happens uh, sometimes so it's it's always best to kind of avoid that or if you do put this within the styling try to keep it at the top so other developers and other coders that come in and see this they see it near the top and they can say okay well you know this I gotta be mindful that uh, col.sm-6 is gonna also add a padding of 10 so what we've done here 
we've added this class and now instead of doing get element by ID we're getting we're doing get elements by class name so that's a long one to remember but it's essentially the same thing get element by ID uh, although it's just get elements because uh, with the classes there's generally more than one so you're scanning for all the elements that are available that have that class name and then the rest is just by class name and here we've got by ID so there's just there's different ways of accessing this information within the DOM when I say DOM I mean the document object model and you can see a little bit more of it when you do console log document and what this is this uh, this uh, gets loaded when the page gets loaded and as you can see here when we do a console log of document we get all of this inf we get access to all of these elements with that are stored within the DOM so we're able to go through them and access them and this is also where we're setting the on click on uh, and we've got a whole bunch of options there and then you could work through the DOM and you could uh, pick out all the different elements that you want it to work with and get access to them so you can get a lot of information in the DOM and uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with it uh, so by default what we're doing is we're just doing these uh, get element by IDs and now we're doing get element by class name so this is giving us returning back within an array uh, array format so class name is going to be within an array format and we're going to get all of these elements and if we actually do a console log out of the class name uh, we'll be able to see in a little bit more detail all that information that we're getting returned there uh, so when I refresh this and we see that uh, we do get all of this information back uh, the length is four so there's four elements that are being returned in there and we can see all this information that's being stored within there uh, we see that the, the nodes, the value, and you do get uh, quite a bit of information back uh, with the class lists. So we can return back all other classes that are available within there. Uh, so we've got a listing of button, button default, answer. So there's three, three different classes. Also, we can uh, sort through them if the need be. Uh, we've got the inner HTML, which for this one, it's attach a click event and inner text. Uh, so inner text and in HTML, although it appears the same, uh, inner text won't hold HTML objects. So you've got like a line split or a paragraph. It's inner text is not going to write those, whereas inner HTML will. And then we've got the different child elements. Uh, so here we've again we've got the data within this child. And there's quite a lot, uh, j just like with anything within the DOM, there's quite a lot of information that you can pick up. Uh, you can also do the next si siblings as well and pick out information from the next siblings. And there's a whole bunch of stuff here. And as we scroll down, we can see that we do have we do have um, all of this. Uh, the DOM is returning back information for all four of the elements that have the class of answer and so what we're doing further in JavaScript we're just gonna go through this and we're gonna go through the list and we're just using class name length so if you see that we we do get uh, class name length is gonna be four so we're gonna be able to very easily return back how many items are gonna be within this list and you, if you look up here it is within uh, an array type format. What we do here is we just do a loop and we go through the length and here we're just adding these event listeners of click onto every single one of these uh, within the array and this is doing the same thing as we're doing up here adding a bunch of event listeners. Uh, you don't have to loop through it you can add event listeners individually so if you want to add uh, event listener to the first item within this uh, list of class names you could do that as well uh, so you just have to write it out four times class name zero add event listener click uh, so you could do that as well but uh, it's much more efficient to use the loop and loop through it and then within here we're doing the same thing what we did up here we calling the function or the method my answer 
or the function, my answer, and here we're returning back. This is the function that's going to run. Uh, so here we've got variable ID answer, this get attribute data ID, and this is where that data ID information is being returned. And this is going to give us information on which, uh, which one of these answers, uh, which one of these nodes with the answer with the class answer got clicked and what the value was of that node. Uh, so this gives us all that information, one, two, three, four, so we know which button got clicked and from there we're able to determine, uh, we're going to set up an array with all the right answers in order and then just compare those to see if the, actual, if the user is actually clicking through the right answer. Uh, so that's what we're doing here and then again this is just more of a placeholder where we're doing the inner HTML and we're setting this as answer and the answer that was selected just to show that we are actually getting a value from ID answer and the way that we're doing it we're just doing this get attribute and going back to our listing here of the return values for the, the class we see that right in the beginning here there's attributes we've got 0, 1, so the second attribute is going to be class, the first one is going to be ID, and from there we're able to see node value of 1, uh, value of 1, text content 1, uh, so we could return back any one of um, uh, any information here on data ID, and what we're doing is we're just getting a value of it, uh, so this get attribute data ID and by default we're returning back that value of 1 and that's what we're using to check to we're going to be using to check to see if the answer is correct. So in this lesson we're going to talk about adding and removing classes after you get the element. When we were first looking at this quiz we were talking about just different ways that we can move through. So the next, previous, and different ways where we could get this information. Uh, so within this lesson, what we've done is we've essentially duplicated out our page one, and we've called it page two, and we have the same structure and setup as we did in page one. So we've got all the different buttons, we've got the data IDs of the buttons, we've got them the class answer, We've got some values here, so we've got a question, we've got some answers, and that's how we, essentially we've done the structure. Uh, so we could add additional pages as needed, and the only thing is with the JavaScript, it does actually become fairly long. So we're doing get element by ID, so once the DOM loads, we're getting page one, we're getting page two, because we're gonna need to access these within the JavaScript. So we're doing my one, my two, and the idea being that if we had additional pages, we would add additional my three, my four, and so on until you get all the pages. And it does actually get fairly long in the code, uh, so we're just going this, doing this as a demonstration purposes of how to add and remove classes, and this is just another way that you can do this. Uh, so we've got our hide, we've got our show, uh, so the hide essentially class essentially just does a display none. Uh, so that will make whatever is has a class of hide, it just won't show that on the within the HTML on the page. Uh, and that's going to be controlled through the through the CSS. So the styling is actually going to hide and then this display block would just be showing uh, whatever content is available within the CSS. So we did hide, we did show. And here, by default, when we're loading page two, we want to hide that page. So when we go down to our code, we attach these to uh, get element by ID. So we've got these attached, page one and page two. And then when uh, we've got the event, add event listener that we did before, that when you click, it runs this uh, function, my answer. And the my answer function is We're looking at the move next and move back uh, so we're looking at those buttons so the move next uh, increases it increases the current page by one and does a new function that we call check page and we pass over that current 
value, although we don't really need to because we can pick it up anyway. Uh, but this is how you can pass a value over to an additional function. So if you had some more calculations in here, you did the check of the page, you could pass the value over within this format. And the same thing with the move back function. Uh, so we're subtracting from the current page and then we're doing check page function and we've got all of our uh, removing and hiding and showing of classes within this function. Uh, so the first thing we're doing, we're doing console log, we're listing out the current page, and then here is where we're checking the value. So we've got our current page, we're checking to see if it equals 1, and if it does equal 1, we're just adding a class of show, we're removing a class of hide from 1, we're adding a class of hide to my2, and re removing show from my2. So we're taking care of all that hiding and showing and there's also another option you could actually toggle it so you could do something like class list toggle show and that would mean that if it was visible it would turn uh, it would remove it if it was there and vice versa so generally if you are using toggle sometimes you might end up in a situation where uh, the toggle didn't actually take place or something something happened with that and your toggle might get off so that's why we're using the actual add and remove instead of the toggling although toggle would be a little bit simpler than uh, doing it this way it's not I always find that it's not a hundred percent uh, so if you really want to add a class and remove a class, just go through that class list add and class list remove. So again, we're tying it over to these ones that we had set up here, the document uh, elements that we had picked up and attached to these variables, and we're just using them down here within this function. And then the second statement here is if current page equals 2, then it's going to essentially do the opposite of what it did in here and then we could do that and so on but as you can see we only have two pages and it's building out there's there's actually coming to be quite a lot of code for these two pages and that's just on that simple functionality of going back and forth and of course we don't have anything built in that if we go on uh, to three to four to five so nothing is going to happen because we don't have any uh, values set for that so it's not actually equaling anything within our list uh, so we'd, we'd have to take care of that as well uh, so as we had spoken earlier we had talked about earlier that there's always different ways to approach it and what we're going to do is in the next lesson we're going to actually go backwards a little bit and go back to using arrays so this lesson was more to demonstrate that there are different ways to move through the items that you have available so having page one and page two and move through them in this case it's not going to be as efficient as using arrays so arrays are going to be a little bit more efficient than this as well as um, we'd have to store the values anyway within the arrays uh, so we're going to actually move all of this stuff into the array and only keeping one uh, one question kind of template so in this lesson we're going to be talking about traversing the DOM and returning values and using those values within the DOM in the previous lesson we talked about how we could set this header and just take that value from the from the array value and place that into this ID. So we could simply just do a get element by ID and we could place that value very easily into, uh, so we would be using my header. We set up the my header get element by ID, tying it to quiz header. And up here at the top, we've got quiz header under the H2 tags. And that's how we were able to set that value. Uh, so just below we've got questions here and of course we could do it the same way that we did this header we could list out all four different IDs and we could assign them different IDs such as question one question two question three question four and then down here we could just set the inner HTML of all those questions uh, but for this lesson we're gonna actually go the harder way and the more complex way because we want to illustrate how you can traverse the DOM and return back those values and working within this way it's going to allow us to be a lot more a lot more 
scalable with the quiz. So if we had 50 questions, we might not want to, or if, if we had a whole bunch of possible answers to the question, uh, we might not want to necessarily be going through that. As well as if we want to have dynamic number of que questions here. Uh, so if we don't necessarily want to fill out all of them and we want to have different values here, we can work within the quiz values with that as well. So it gives us more dynamic ability, uh, but it does make it harder because uh, as we do have to traverse the DOM. Uh, so what we've done here is that we've set up my question and we've done get element by ID questions. So over here we've got the ID questions for this div and we've got a whole bunch of children here within uh, questions, within the ID questions. Uh, so we've placed that, gotten that ID, and here we're placing that within console log. So if we just do my question, we're going to see what gets returned, uh, what the DOM has for this element. And then we've got children 0, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so this is just to illustrate what's being picked up here from the DOM when we do get element by ID questions. So when we do refresh that, we see that initially, I believe that first console log was the length. Uh, so we've got a my quiz length. So it's just giving us the length of uh, this, the dimensions of the array. So it says we've got two items within there. And then the next one that we've got here, we've got the my question element. Uh, so this is returning all the nodes and information that the DOM has. And as we can see here, there's a whole bunch of information. And when we do go to children, HTML collection, it does list out four children. And these are all the different divs that we had available within those questions. Going back to the source code, you can see that under questions, we do have four children and we've got four divs essentially that are all called span-sm-6 and they contain each contain a hyperlink with a value, the data ID value, as well as the value for the answer of the question. So these are just uh, values that I had placed in there and we're overwriting them using JavaScript as well. So this is just listing out manually all that information from the console so that we could demonstrate it for this lesson. And what it's doing is it's listing out what we're returning back for each one of these children. And as you can see, when we go within the children, uh, we've got a whole bunch of information again that we can access through the DOM. And what we're interested in is these uh, are these child nodes. And we want to get the value back from anything that's within the child node. Uh, so we've got text here where we've got some textual information. And then what we want to look at is this href button, uh, button default answer. And here we, we, we see that we do actually contain that value that we're looking for. Uh, so we've got, a, again, a bunch of information that we could use at some point if needed. And we can see that we've got the outer HTML. And when we go over to inner HTML, we've got attach a click event. Uh, so it's, our, it's already attached this, um, this array information within it. Uh, so that's what the inner HTML is telling us. And uh, that's how we're accessing that. So once we, if we actually do that, um, we see that it's already being attached in there. So going back to the source code and the way that's being attached. So again, we're, we're going through, we're setting up a couple of get elements by IDs here. So what I'm going to just do is I'm going to group them all together. So it's a lot easier to read. Uh, we won't need this console log length anymore. Uh, we, we were using that down here. Um, so quiz length. So just so that we know that the value is going to be two that's being returned there. makes it uh, dynamic for us to add additional so if we just had question three we could add this in and we should be able to refresh it and just go to question three that way uh, so this gives us the ability to kind of 
really easily add additional questions and uh, it scales it up from the array. And also um, one other thing that we had added on the move next, so we added um, an if a conditional statement here that if uh, the current page is less than the my quiz length minus one, uh, it's not, it's going to uh, allow you to add and then we do the check page. But if this condition isn't true, we're just doing a console log and saying the end of the quiz. And the same thing with move back. And this is what this is doing is this is preventing that um, if we kept clicking it and we would go over the actual number of questions that we have available. Uh, so we don't want to we don't want to do that because uh, that would be throwing an error because it would no longer have any values that we could place within the quiz. Uh, so we've locked that down and we're just sending a console log message for now uh, showing what um, what we have available. Later lesson as well we're going to be hiding the previous and hiding the next uh, when there's no more questions uh, and that's going to also help with that error issue that um, we don't want to have uh, we don't want to have an incorrect um, number of questions more than what we have values for. So going back to the quiz, when we do when we run our function here, check page. Uh, so again, we don't have to pass this current page value, but we're just spacing this out uh, so for use later on. And here we've got our check page. Uh, we're doing console log of the current page. So again, we're using console log quite a bit and it's a lot for this lesson uh, in order to kind of illustrate uh, just some of the what's happening behind the scenes within the JavaScript. So just made that a little bit bigger so it's a little bit uh, easier to view. And we can see that this is just returning uh, our information. It's essentially logging through and telling us what's happening, what the JavaScript is reading, and that's what we're using the console log for. Uh, so oftentimes when you're programming, it is a good, uh, useful tool to kind of just send something over to the console if you're unsure, and if you want to just um, check to see if a particular function has fired. So it's an easy way to kind of see if that's happening. Uh, so from what here, uh, this is what we did in the last lesson where we set the header in our HTML, my quiz. And as I said earlier, we could have just done the same thing for all these questions, uh, but we chose to do it a little bit um, a little bit more difficult and traverse the DOM and return back those values because there's going to be often times when you do want to be able to traverse the DOM and especially if you want to have scalability and growth within your application. Uh, using the DOM is going to be a lot more effective and efficient um, when you're changing the number of answers or uh, whatever you want to have more dynamic uh, options within the within the multi-dimensional array. So we could do something like the number of answers, possible answers, or we could uh, do like a length of them and then just uh, subtract out the length. Uh, we could pick up knowing that we've got two that are preset that aren't part of the questions and then the rest would be questions. Uh, so, so a number of different ways and a number of different reasons for doing it within that format. And what we're doing here is we're just looping through the length of uh, the, value, the values that are being returned in questions. Uh, so again, we're looping through and we're seeing that there's four. And again, we could have done a lot easier uh, where we could have just put a length of four. But the idea of this lesson, again, is to kind of learn to traverse the DOM and use, use the DOM effectively uh, within your coding. Uh, so the next one here, we are just setting another variable. So we're doing current node. And this is going to help us keep track of the nodes. So keep, keep our, our string down um, and just keep uh, using my question. Uh, so that's tying it back to this variable we set up. So document get element by ID questions. And this is how we're actually going through the DOM. So we're setting up an additional uh, variable using the my question original variable that had all that information from the DOM and we're selecting the children from there and from there um, we're also using the my question children length here and then here we're just getting the children values so what we know that it's going to loop through all the available items that are within my question children uh, and then we're just consoling logging out uh, what we're returning. So we're returning out what the current value of the inner HTML is 
and then here we're just setting that inner HTML and again this is multi-dimensional array so we're using my quiz to tie it back to the array and then current page which would tell us which one of these items within the array we want it to return back and then finally we're doing I plus one because uh, we're starting with zero so we want to be able to move to the zero item and plus one because this is where we're starting the actual uh, answers to the questions uh, as you remember the first item within the array here the zero item is going to be the question the first one is an answer second one is a possible answer third and fourth and then the fifth one here or this uh, um, the sixth item or the fifth one uh, number five within the array is going to be the value that we're going to check in the later lesson. So here we've got i plus 1 and that's why we've got that plus 1 so we could bump it over and start with these values instead of starting with this value. And as we loop through it's going to populate all this inner HTML of this element. So we can see it again here uh, when we go through and we see that initial values were one, two, three, four, and when we ch when we click it, we see that these values are now changing. Uh, so we're able to to see that the change is happening within the console log as we're clicking through. And again, it's just picking up whatever inner HTML is here, placing it here within the console, and then here we're just listing out what page we're on. And we could use this as well within the quiz um, to do questions. Uh, question value, question number one, two, or three, uh, and we could also list out how many questions are available within the quiz. So with any quiz, uh, we want to add a progress bar because it's kind of a little neat feature that people, when they're using the quiz, they can see how far along they are within the quiz and as well as go back and forth. Uh, so here we've got a progress bar. So this progress bar is native within Bootstrap. So if you're not familiar within Bootstrap, uh, it's got a whole bunch of great options. And we see that for Bootstrap, so we just went to getbootstrap.com and you can see how easily a progress bar can be added in Bootstrap. And here's some examples. You can also make it colorful, you can make it striped, you can make it animated. So quite a lot of really neat options for progress bars. Uh, so we're going to use the striped one within this example. And we've essentially brought in the HTML code from the Bootstrap site and we've attached some JavaScript to make it dynamic and make it respond to the number of uh, how far along you are within the quiz. So it's just rounding up to a percentage. Uh, so when we look at the code, uh, this is fairly straightforward here where we're bringing in that HTML. We assigned it an ID of progress bar so that we could use the JavaScript and do get element by ID. Uh, so if you're using jQuery, there's going to be, it's going to kind of simplify things uh, where you could just grab the class progress bar. But within here, uh, we want to assign an ID because we want to use get element by ID. So we've assigned a variable here, get element by ID and we've got that progress bar by the ID value. And then all we're doing here is we're doing an update progress bar, so we're calculating an increment, we're doing math ceiling, and we're taking the current page plus one, because again, we're starting at zero, and if we were to start at zero, then we would, on our first question, we would be at zero, uh, but once that question is completed, we could we would be at that 30 33 percent and then the last question would be 67 percent as opposed to a hundred so it all depends on how you want to run your progress bar again it's up to how you're designing it so if you were to take out that plus one it wouldn't be much of a difference within the the progress bar uh, sometimes it might be better to do it this way or you could do question one uh, so you would start out with a progress bar of zero and if we look at the element here, we can see that our value here currently for the progress bar is uh, zero with the zero. And then when we do update it, I'm just going to drag 
uh, we see that it goes to 34 and then it goes to 67 and because this is our last question uh, we have nothing left to click and uh, it's it would just our next page would be the results so again depending on how you want to run it uh, we're actually going to start it off with zero and then as we move through the quiz this way and then uh, we're going to finalize this when we detect if it's the last question we're going to do a calculation of how many you got right and then we're going to do a tally uh, so we're going to be doing that um, coming up in the next lesson and then that's where we're going to have our progress bar at 100 uh, percent so depending on how you want to run it uh, you could do either or whatever works best for you and the good thing again about bootstrap is that it is mobile responsive so even if you do have a smaller let's get rid of that Uh, if you do have a smaller screen size, uh, you can see that the progress bar looks really nice there as well. And you don't have to include this uh, this value, uh, so we've just chosen to include the inner HTML. Uh, you could also do something where you've got... Uh, I just did some updating there, and I just did current page plus one of, and then the quiz length. And as you can see within our project, now when we go through the different ones we've got two of three three of three and uh, so on so it all again it depends on how you're trying to design it so i'm going to move it back to that percentage uh, but i just want to illustrate that there are different ways to do that as well so now i've brought it back to the percentage view and you can see when we do move through it that we do have this uh, nice progress bar so that's how to add a progress bar uh, bootstrap prog progress bar and make it dynamic using JavaScript. Within this lesson we wanted to cover off adding and removing different classes within the bootstrap framework in order to accommodate the buttons. So if we're starting out on the first the first question within this quiz we have no previous questions so we don't want to have the ability to kind of click through this one. And we also want to go through all three of our questions and then we don't want to have the ability to click through the next button. So what I've done here is I've disabled the button within Bootstrap. I've added a disabled class. That appears to work fairly well, but if you notice that I'm still able to click the buttons because the event handlers are still on those buttons. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the bootstrap disable, which you probably could use within, if you had set up the event listeners different, or you could disable the event listeners as well. Uh, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to hide the buttons altogether so that they definitely won't be clickable if we hide them. Look at the code that we have right now, the code that we've added and updated. Uh, we also did a pull left and a pull right for the buttons to have them uh, so if we were to actually to remove this pull left and pull right, just show you what happens. When we go back into the project, we see that pull left and pull right, uh, what it's doing is it's pulling this one to the right and pulling this one to the left. And this is going to be useful when we actually add in our hide and show. So we're going to go back to what we had done in previous lesson, one of the earliest lessons. We had set up these classes here of hiding and showing. Uh, so what we're going to do instead of using disable, uh, so we've entered in our adding and removing of buttons when there's no more questions in the queue and uh, when you can't go back. Uh, so we've added that within the check page because uh, we're running this check page. We're initially running this when the JavaScript loads as well as we're running the check page every time we're moving. Uh, through the quiz questions. So this is the ideal spot to place this and what we've done is we've added uh, this disabled and that's a bootstrap class that's available by default and what we're just going to do is we're just going to change this disabled to hide in order to use our own class and that will give us the ability to actually hide the entire button itself so not disabling it but we're just going to completely hide it 
and that's going to remove that issue that we were having before where it was clickable and um, it was still clicking through even though it was disabled. And as we can see here now, uh, we're, we can see that the next, the previous, and it stops when we do have our last, our, our last question. So we had three questions within this quiz. Uh, so when we go, so we can look at uh, the array, the multi-dimensional array, and there we've got one, two, three questions. So we wanted to disable the buttons if it reaches past the last one, as well as um, so if it reaches past the quiz length. And if you remember with the quiz, uh, the pages we started at zero uh, because that would work better within our arrays. So we had to make an adjustment here because the quiz length is going to be slightly uh, larger because it's going to return back three as the length and our current pages are going to be less than that. So we could either add one to here or subtract one from here. And uh, that's what we've done. And so now when this statement becomes true, uh, that the Sorry, when the check page, uh, so that's what we've done here. And we've done, uh, we've actually added to the page here. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Uh, so here we had subtracted on the move next. Here we had added on the check page. And when we look at uh, adding, so, so when this matches, and we've also put in this within the console log, so we can see a better calculation of exactly where we are with that. Uh, and we can add in one to the current page uh, by default, we've got if the current page equals zero, uh, we're going to remove the button previous and do class list adding, and we're going to add hide class to it, and else we're going to just remove it. Uh, so if you remove a class that doesn't exist, uh, it's not going to throw any errors in JavaScript. And then here we have the condition for the last part, where if the page plus one is uh, it doesn't match this anymore. It's actually going to hide the button and uh, Here it's going to remove the hide if this statement is true uh, So you can do various variations of this When we do look at um, the code here So just going to make sure that that's saved and we do look at the code we refresh it We see that we do have this calculation. So we're on uh, We've got a size uh, of three. We've got three questions and we're on currently on page zero. When we press next, we still have a size of three and we're on one. And when we press next again, we have a size still of three and we're on number two. So this is where we had to make that adjustment. Where when we go in into the check page, we're adding one to the current page so that it does match up and that would be three. So it's gonna be less than or equal to or I should say it's going to be equal to, so this will no longer be true, and it's going to, at that point, hide this, um, this value. Being the next button. Uh, so we had also updated here where we get doc document, get element by ID, and we had attached this variable value to this, uh, get element by ID, button next, and button previous, in order so we don't have to continuously call to the DOM there and uh, we could reuse those, uh, those uh, variables, those values. And again, it depends on how you want to use the logic within this. Uh, so there's going to be different ways you can do that, uh, or you could be adding, uh, toggling the classes. And again, depending on how you've set this up, uh, you might vary from this, uh, but you do have to always remember that uh, it, it is always a good idea to remove out those buttons or disable them uh, so that the user that's actually using with the application, they're not going to get confused on what they have to do. So as we continue to build out the quiz, uh, we need a way to determine if the answers are wrong or if they're right answers. Uh, so moving through them, we want to make sure that we do have the ability to check correct answers and make sure that we do uh, pick up wrong answers. So I've set that up. Uh, currently it's going into the console log and it's telling us if we've got it correct or if we've got it wrong. And we'll just look at the code now. Uh, so what I had to do is I set up um, another variable here, an integer, uh, that's going to calculate how many correct answers we've got. Uh, so we can do this in a number of ways and we're probably going to make some adjustments to this because right now we've got um, checking the my answer and if the answer, uh, so we do that 
what we had before where we get the ID answer, where we get that data ID value. And these are the ones that we're actually going to be using within the array and just to check if we are getting the right uh, value according to the click. Uh, so here we've also within the array we've made some adjustments to it. Uh, so I've moved uh, the questions, the actual uh, potential answers to the questions over one and I've moved this over to be the first one here or the second uh, item within the array. So same thing with all the other uh, arrays that we've got down here and I made one other adjustment down here when I'm writing out that inner HTML and I'm doing that capitalize so I'm able to pick up the next available object within there. And then we've got our check here as we did before so when the event listener gets clicked so we're adding those event listeners to all the my answers here so all these answers are gonna have event listeners uh, so they're listening for clicks on them so any click on these will actually result in the event listener firing and that means that this function is going to run and from the function we're just doing this to get the get attribute so data ID and there's going to be a number of ways to do this but for this tutorial we wanted to highlight uh, the data ID uh, so we're actually going to use that instead. We could have used any number of different ways to get this value and to figure out what's been clicked. Uh, so we're going to be using the get uh, the data IDs and these are just attributes that you can set so you can hold a whole bunch of different attributes in here as well and once that uh, that gets so once that gets clicked uh, we get the data ID we put in a value a variable called ID answer and then here we check to see if the my quiz current page uh, second item in the array and that would be this one is equal to the ID answer and if it is then we do correct answer and if it's wrong we do wrong answer and again this is the same format that we had used when we were writing out that inner HTML here uh, where we were picking up the header the quiz current page zero which was returning the first item in the array and then afterwards here we want to return the second item so we used one and we're turning that value so these again are going to be the correct values in the array so it starts off with the question the correct answer and then all four possible uh, answers and then that's how we're calculating the correct answers uh, and uh, now we're just putting it out to the console and of course we need to update this as well which we're going to be showing you in the next lesson because right now uh, we don't have anything to calculate the actual number of correct questions other than at the time of the click we're determining if it's right or wrong. So from our last lesson, we were looking at how we could store all these correct answers and wrong answers. Uh, and the flaw with that was that at the time, we're able to determine if the answer is correct or if it's incorrect, but we don't have a way to kind of calculate it, which we want to do right at the end. Uh, so even if we were adding one value to the correct value, it, uh, we could do it that way. Uh, but then we would also have to limit that people couldn't go back, they couldn't go next. Uh, maybe we could do a quiz where something like we didn't have these previous and next buttons and when someone clicks it, it automatically moves to the next one, counts the answers, and we could do a quiz in that format as well. But because we want to illustrate for this lesson all the different options that we can do with uh, the buttons, and the different ways that we can work with it. We've set it up within this type of a model. And so now we're gonna work within this model to achieve and be able to calculate the results. So we can't have it add, if we click it, we can't have it add one to being correct. We have to store that data and do an entire calculation at the end of the quiz. So whenever the person is done with the quiz, uh, we might not necessarily want to even uh, show them if they've got it right or wrong and we don't, might just want to log it somehow whatever one they've selected we might highlight or something like that in order to 
uh, to be able to track which ones they've clicked. So what we've done now is we've set up an array. So this is just a blank array that we've set up. We've called it my answers. And what's happening here within the my answer function, we're actually just adding in my answers and we're tracking the current page as the key for the array. And uh, then we're setting in that um, the information we're getting from the data ID and we're placing that within the my answer area uh, array and as we can see here when we're console logging that out so when we are console logging it out we're building up an array of all the different items that are available all the different questions and the answers that were provided for those questions and then what we're going to do in the next lesson is we're going to have a finish button that's going to show up here once we've finished the quiz and uh, maybe something finish and submit answer or something like that. And that will, uh, at that point, we'll pull from this array and we'll do the calculations there as well. And we'll give the user a score of how they've scored on the quiz. So uh, again, there's a number of different uh, variations that you can do and because we use these buttons to navigate uh, for this for the purposes of this uh, lesson uh, we we didn't incorporate it as we could have uh, with just adding in if the answer is right or wrong just at the time of the click uh, so we're going to move on to the next lesson uh, where we're going to actually calculate and use uh, these an these uh, these answers that we've stored in the array so we've added in an additional check here so we didn't want the user to be able to come in and just click next 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 and go through all the questions we want to restrict them from having to answer something first and then be able to hit next and the same with the additional questions uh, so the way and we of course we can allow them to go back to the previous one uh, so that's not an issue um, and we're going to use that array that we had created in the previous lesson in order to do the control of this and all we had to do we just had to add an additional conditional statement here when on the move next we don't have to worry about the move previous because it's going to be assumed that if they've already moved to that question uh, that they're able to move uh, move back that they've already completed it so we're going to only have the check here uh, and what we've done is we've added in the console logs, okay, to proceed, not answered. And um, so we can do some kind of other functionality here as well, uh, maybe pop up a message or whatever we want to do to send that notification to the user that they haven't actually answered a question and that they need to answer one before they can proceed. Uh, so what we can do is we can create a little message box uh, in order to let the user know what's happening within the quiz. And then down here, all we did is we just wrapped this in that uh, conditional statement. So if this is true, if my answers has a value that's um, within uh, current page, so if you remember current page would start at zero. So if my answers has a value there as the first item within that array, then we're okay to proceed. And if we're on the second page, again, if uh, there's a value within the second item of that array, then we're okay to proceed, and so on. So it doesn't have to be a correct answer. It just has to have some kind of value within that array in order for the user to be able to proceed and to complete that move next functionality. And this is only because we do have these buttons that are moving next and moving uh, backwards, the previous and the next button. Uh, so that we had opted in to include this within this course. So it's not a necessary requirement and there are steps that you probably could skip, but because uh, we wanted to complete uh, we had some objectives for this course that we want to outline uh, different functionality. We've kept that in. So this is a minor update that we did to the code. And if you had noticed um, that some of our answers, they weren't coming, uh, they weren't showing up properly where we had that we wanted the first letter in each one of these answers to be uppercase and the rest to be lowercase. And uh, that's the format that we wanted to use. So even though we could uh, easily do that with CSS or we could go in and we could make these adjustments uh, right within our, um, our arrays, uh, we we wanted to have that option, that additional check, because we want to really utilize 
uh, the ability where we're doing the inner HTML and we can run a function. So the purposes of this course, uh, that's why we've included this. So we're running a function that we've called capitalize and we've created the function down here. And as well, we want it to get in some of the substring and uh, substring uh, options for working with strings within this course. So within, uh, for JavaScript, you've got your to uppercase, you've got to lowercase, but you don't have this kind of mixed case where you can do the first letter large and then the other one small. And within the, some of the other languages and there's functions within jQuery. So there's a lot of options, but if you wanted to use just uh, regular JavaScript in order to achieve this, you do need to create your own function. So what we're doing within this function, we're passing this value, reading it as string, and then we're returning uh, that string value uh, substring 0, 1, and we're putting that to up, uppercase, and then we're adding in additional substring 1. And what that's doing is that's taking this, breaking it apart, and changing each of the first, uh, each of the first characters within that, within that uh, string to uppercase. And that's in fact what we're getting uh, when we're looking at our, uh, our output here uh, for the user and uh, yeah so they're all coming in within that format and that was a minor adjustment that we had made uh, in order to achieve that uh, styling and of course uh, there's a lot of different things you can do a lot of different functions you can run at this point as well as uh, throughout where we're checking the answers so we want to have something different uh, we're, we're able to do that as well and also we want to illustrate that having this uh, within a loop, uh, this only allowed us, this only made us have to type this one time to make this change and we didn't have to make any other changes. Uh, whereas if we had them all separate, separated out as we're setting the inner HTML for each different, uh, each different ID value, uh, we would have uh, we would have had more lines of code to update. Uh, so this is a good example of using a loop and utilizing that loop, adding a function to that in order to achieve um, a, achieve an objective. So as, we, as we've moved through the course, we've gone through a lot of the different syntax and elements that are available within JavaScript, come from controlling the DOM to just with arrays and adding event listeners. So we've done quite a lot with functionality and arrays and uh, to build out this quiz. So now we're coming to the end of it and we need a way to kind of check over and make sure that we can calculate all these answers. Uh, so I've added in on the last question, it's always going to provide this submit quiz option and you need to actually make an answer here before you could submit it. So just as the next button, uh, we do need to make an answer and then we're able to do the submission and then the quiz is gonna be over. We're gonna calculate out the results and show those results within, uh, within the page here, so the calculations. Uh, so when we open up our code, uh, what we've done here is we've added in, in the HTML, we've added in a new a new row there and that's going to contain the button uh, finish quiz we're using our hide class that we had created in the beginning as well uh, we are using button block uh, so this in bootstrap allows you to have the button full width 100 percent width and again uh, you could work with all the different elements in bootstrap or you could be designing your own uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to work that uh, so uh, also, um, so we were looking at ending the quiz and all we had to do is add in uh, showing that button as an option. And when we go over to the, the buttons that were set up, so we did set up an additional button, button finish, get element by ID, finish quiz. And you can see that here as the ID. So again, get element by ID, finish quiz, button finish, and we added our event listener there. So when that gets clicked, we're going to run that end quiz function, and that's going to check to see if there's an answer in that current page. 
Uh, so again, within that array that we had created, and if the answer is there, uh, if this turns out true, then the console says quiz over, and if this is not answered, then it says not answered, and it won't let you complete. So we've got our completion code is going to be uh, going to be here within this section of end quiz, and we're going to be going over that in the next lesson, how we're going to cal calculate the results and show the results to the user. So we've made some updates to the code, predominantly that if you click one of uh, the possible answers, it's going to get this green box around it. And then when you go next, you click the next one, and you go back to previous, you still see that you've got this green box. So we're going to check the first one, go there, uh, check this one, go back, and we see that it's already pre-filled. Same with this one, and until we've made a selection, we're not going to have it filled out. Uh, so again, we're going to be using that array that we had set up with the answers, and we're checking over all of this. And when we go to the code, what we had to update for this, we had to create um, another class, so just select answer, and this is what's going to happen with it, so, so you could do anything that you want within the class to highlight that particular selection. And what all we had to do down here at the bottom is that we added in a new function, add box. And what this function does is it goes through this link, so we had to traverse the DOM again and had to get back the children of my question. So if we go back to my question, uh, we're getting this questions uh, element by ID and that's what my question is. We're looking at the children of there and all the children of that questions div are going to be these four are going to be the children there. And so we're picking all four of those. We're checking the length of it. So if we were to add in another child there, uh, that would work just as well. And that really makes our quiz fairly dynamic. Uh, and the ability to be able to add in questions if the need be. Uh, so we're looping through all the length questions there and uh, so this is created dynamically using the length of the different nodes that are available within the question ID. And as we loop through that we uh, set up a current node just as we had do done in another example and uh, so we do my question children uh, I so I is going to be the value that it's lo looping through so this is going to return back this any one of these particular nodes so we're going to loop through this one this one and this one and that's all that we're doing here is that we're returning back those nodes and that gives us the ability to use those in this function where when we get the, the node that we're looking for, so we do a quick check of my answers, we see if the current page, if it has an answer, and if uh, the answer is equal to uh, the value that we're looking at currently, so if we loop through the answers, we see that if it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and if it's equivalent, uh, we actually had to do a plus there to add to it, so it would be 1, 2, 3, that we're looking for that we're looking at and if those values are met uh, what it's going to do is it's going to add this particular class so we had gone through this as well before how to add classes in JavaScript so we add in this new class that we created and if it's not true then we're going to remove out the classes and again uh, with JavaScript when you do the class list add class list remove if there if it doesn't exist uh, then it's not going to throw any errors. So that's safe to do. And uh, that's a way to kind of loop through and make sure that you do get uh, that highlighted area. And it removes out the highlight on any other ones that might have had it before. Uh, you could also do it in a more complex type uh, fashion where you could have maybe another array tape keep the values in there, the ones that are selected, and then do a check of which ones are selected and only remove out those ones. So, so there again, there's, there's a lot of different possibilities of what you can do. And uh, so we've chosen to go this route, um, going through the loop and just adding and removing classes because we did want to focus quite a bit of the course on being able to remove and add classes. Uh, so this is something that when you go with jQuery, uh, it's a lot more 
uh, user-friendly and functional, but it is always good to see the uh, fundamental building blocks of JavaScript that are used within um, libraries such as jQuery. Uh, so the, additionally to this function, we had to update our original function where we're uh, doing the check to the page. We're actually adding in uh, that inner HTML. So we, ha so we had to add in a check there as well. While it's looping through, uh, we did a simple current page check ID plus uh, I value plus one again the same as what the same reason that we had done it in the add box so that it does equal up to uh, value because we're only got we've only got values of one and up here uh, so we have to make sure that this is equivalent as well to that value uh, so we did the same thing and if it's there then we add the class and if it's not there then we just simply remove the class and all of that what that did is that gave us the ability to kind of click and highlight. And then we could go next and we could retrieve where we had clicked. And this type of functionality has got useful, um, it's, it's useful in other aspects as well, other than quizzes. Uh, you might be able to find a use for it um, in different variations as well as adding and storing it in that fashion. And it does create a more user-friendly type interface. Uh, so if you do shrink that down, just going to get rid of the console there, uh, you can see that on mobile it's going to be really user-friendly uh, that you're able to click and see what the selection are, is. And then again move through the next and you've got the option to submit the quiz and uh, unfortunately this quiz I got everything wrong but uh, we can see that how this is going to work through. And it is uh, advisable, so we're going to include the source file for the quiz within this course. So it is advisable that you download it and uh, play around with it. Feel free to make changes. Um, we might want to get rid of a lot of these console messages, so we're going to probably just uh, comment them out because uh, they're not really going to be uh, something that we want popping up. If you're using Internet Explorer, of course, uh, the console messages aren't going to be, uh, they're going to cause errors on the older versions. Uh, so you always have to be mindful of uh, when you're building out content on the web, especially when you're using JavaScript, that some of the older browsers might not be as uh, friendly to certain uh, syntax that's available within JavaScript. Uh, and then of course, um, uh, that's why we're removing out the console messages there. And we've got some other uh, commenting in here as well. Uh, where we've placed it within this course. So that's how you build out a quiz using JavaScript and we had only used uh, just the fu fundamental uh, building blocks of JavaScript. We hadn't used any additional libraries like jQuery uh, which would have probably simplified quite a bit of this uh, as the event listeners are easier to attach in jQuery. Uh, you don't need as much um, much writing uh, but we did want to keep with uh, JavaScript and the fundamentals of JavaScript using JavaScript for the entire project. So now we're ready to put our finishing touches on our quiz. So when we load the quiz now, we're going to be presented with a question and we've got four possible answers. And when we select an answer, we've still got this console log that's going to tell us if it's correct. Uh, but the user generally won't be able to see that, so they're not going to see what they're selecting. And then we're going to move to the next one, and the next one, and once we've made that selection, we do submit, and we see how many we got correct. Uh, we use Bootstrap's uh, Glyphcons in order. There's these icons that are built into Bootstrap to have these really nice kind of checkboxes, and we scored three out of three. So when we refresh it, uh, we'll just go through and show you what happens. Uh, again, the scoring, so we've got X's, question two, we got it wrong, question two, uh, question one, we got it wrong, and question three, we got it right. So we scored one out of three. We used that calculation that we had set up originally with the correct in order to calculate uh, the value of how many we ended up getting correct. Uh, so again, um, we added in that finish quiz button and we moved over to, uh, we added an additional div into 
here, so quiz content, and we moved that around so that we could actually uh, remove out and rewrite all the inner HTML that's available within this div in order to be able to finish the quiz. And again, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Uh, so it would have required quite a bit of hiding and showing and checking all the different uh, events that we had listening. Uh, so instead, we just decided that probably the easiest way to finish this off would be just to do quiz content as an ID, set that up within our get element by ID, and sorry, get um, set that up when we do the end quiz and get element by ID, do quiz content, and then just set the inner HTML to output. And over here, we created a new variable called output. So when the end quiz runs and there is an answer within the current page, uh, we're just we're going to run the class as output, quiz results, and new line. And from here, we're just console logging that the quiz is over. We're setting up a default value for question result. And here we're looping through all the different answers that we had received within um, the My Answers array. And we're comparing that to what we had in the multi-dimensional array, the My Quiz array. And here we're getting a result. So if this is true, we're giving it a value of OK. And this is adding then that uh, checkbox. And we're doing correct. And if it's not true, if the statement is not true, we're doing question result and we're doing that uh, circle with the line through it. And at the end, we're just outputting question. We're doing um, one I plus one. So this is going to give us the value of the question uh, within the array plus one. So more readable than starting with zero. And here we've got the question result. So this information and we're doing uh, so so it's going to go question one, question two, question three. And then here at the end, after the, we, we finish with the loop, we're doing output equals output plus u scored. And then this is the number that we've got correct. Uh, so this was adding up over here. We added, uh, we increased the correct value out of my quiz length. Uh, so this was the, just the, uh, the length of the my quiz array, the multi-dimensional array where we had all of our values. Uh, so we could have easily assigned a variable to that too or an integer to that. We did actually end up using it several times within the code so it might have been a good idea to reassign a value to that, um, an integer to that and then we could work with it. Uh, and then all we had to do here, the last line here, we set the inner HTML to the output. Uh, so this is all this uh, HTML that we built up, looping through and uh, delivering and creating that output um, as we went through the results of the array. So now going back to the quiz, we can see that we can also go previous, but then we still have that answer. So we realize that there is an error there and there is an issue there that we could go previous and we're checking that value. So we have to actually make some adjustments to this code to make sure that uh, you can't actually end the quiz uh, when my answer current page. Uh, so we're just going to check to make sure that the current page has been answered. And what we can do is we're just going to remove out that current page, put a value of 2 in it and go back out, refresh the code and see if uh, that bug actually doesn't uh, happen again. So now if we go to previous, our submit quiz is still there, but we don't have an answer uh, on that last page. So that's exactly what we wanted and we want to get answers in all three of the questions that, uh, that we had provided. And as I had mentioned before, there's a lot of different ways to build out quizzes. Uh, so for this course, we had set up um, some of the, some of them might have been a longer way to do it, but the logic is always going to be there that you do have to take care of and answer all of these uh, potential hazards when you are creating a quiz. And depending on how you're doing these click events, uh, as well as what you're doing when items get clicked. You could use form data, you could just do more simplified quiz that way as well. Uh, so you don't have to have all these 
uh, clicks you could just take in uh, you could set up a bunch of radio buttons and just select the value of the radio button that was selected. So that would probably be one of the easier ways to do the quiz and you wouldn't have to have all these um, clickable events and you could just have one button that would submit that and we could run the array as well, the, the function to check and as well place the items within the array the same way. So again, a lot of different ways to do it, but for the purposes of this quiz, uh, we want to incorporate all the different uh, objectives uh, to touch over within JavaScript. Uh, so this will give you a wider range and selection of ways to build out uh, not only quizzes, but other web pages uh, using JavaScript, incorporating all these different uh, items that are available, all this different syntax that's available within JavaScript. Looking at it, I, th I believe there's probably one more thing that we have to add in because we don't actually, we aren't able actually to see what we've selected as we move back and forth. Uh, so we're going to add that in the, the in the next lesson uh, and just go over how we can highlight the selected item and keep that within uh, within the JavaScript. So I had a few questions about adding in images, adding additional dynamic content into the quiz. So if you're looking for something like this where we've got that heading that we had before and now we've added in an op option for an image and you can see here that the image does change as well so it's it's a dynamic image, uh, dynamic content as long as well as what we're using here in the header. And this is all being pulled in through the array. Uh, so we've got our array header and now we've got another item here within that array so we've got our image and then we've got the correct answer so we actually moved this over one and added that into this multi-dimensional array that we're going through and picking out and checking to see if we've got the correct answers uh, so this was something that we did have to make some updates here. We had to make some updates in the coding to make sure that we're changing the item in the array that we're selecting that equals the actual answer. Because uh, we did add in this additional one and if you do add in any more additional items within the array, you're going to have to adjust those as well. So there's quite a few things that we were adjusting and we had to go through the code and anything that had that value that we were looking at, that set value, we had to move that over. As well, we also mid did an update here, so the length of the object. Uh, so this is going to be the quiz length, and it's just doing checking the my quiz array length and just checking how many different items are within this, uh, this first array. Uh, so we're getting a value of one, two, three, and we're doing a subtraction uh, so that it works well within if my answer's length of object is listed out as uh, that value. Because again, we're starting with a value of zero and we'd be returning a full value, a full count value. So we had to make that adjustment there minusing one so that it fits in with the calculation for the array. And again, with the arrays, uh, so if you are using images, uh, just be, or if you are trying to put HTML in within the code, make sure that you're not breaking out of your JavaScript, because if you add in a double quote within a double quoted item, you're actually gonna break out of the JavaScript and it's gonna cause an error. So if you do wanna add in a double quote, or if you do have a path to an image that you wanted to add in here, um, so you could actually just do that with a single quote or you could do a backslash on the double quote. Uh, so for instance, if you had, if you want to quote out something here, you wouldn't do it like this, you would do it like this so that those quotes actually show. So it would show without error and it would just show those two double quotes. So we're just gonna refresh our page so we can see that in fact we do see the double quotes there uh, so again if you want to have quotes that show up or quotes within your HTML uh, you need to use either a single or a backslash double quote in order to push for it to show up if you just do a double quote without any kind of break there uh, it's gonna throw an error and it's not gonna load the page property uh, and one of the ways that if you do have some errors and if you do have some issues 
if you find that it's not it's not working it's not functioning uh, open up your console and check out what error is being listed here within the console and here it's telling me which uh, what error it's seeing and the page the line number where the error is located and this gives me an indication that on line 86 of this page I can see that I do have an error there and that's because we did have that uh, extra quote there so once that gets removed so I go back to the code and once I go and I remove that we're going to see that when we go back out refresh it everything is working again and we don't have any errors within console so that's an important thing to keep in mind if you find that your code is actually not working properly uh, check your console make sure that you don't have any issues within your console so now that we've got our console working and we're not seeing any errors there uh, so we can see that we can move through the quiz and in fact this content does change dynamically In the last lesson we looked at how to add in images and I also received some questions about how to pull in external content. Uh, so what you could do is to pull in external content you could just do a source and you can pull out this array information and place that within a source. But a better way to do that is to use JSON. Uh, so the JSON formatting, this is a JavaScript um, object notation and this is a great way to transfer throw over data and as you can see there are quite a few benefits over JSON and over using arrays because uh, JSON can actually be brought through in JSON format from a server or it can be bought it brought in from another API or an external source so this gives you a lot more versatility with your coding and with the actual data and the content of the quiz so you can have this sitting on another site, another server, you could be pulling it from a database, and a whole bunch of options. And which uh, you don't really have as much flexibility when you've got arrays or multi-dimensional array-based typed objects uh, as opposed to using JSON. So this JSON file, this is already a generated JSON file. Uh, so we're not going to be going through how to generate a JSON file. Uh, but the format is essentially that we've got a name here and we've got a key value and then we've got the value associated to that key. And this works a lot better than arrays uh, for the fact that we're able to place values here and then also uh, or place keys and then find them through the value. Whereas before when we added in those images, we had to shift everything over. Uh, so with the JSON format, we've got the value of question, we've got a value of image, we've got the correct answer, and then A1, A2, A3, and A4 for the questions. Uh, and then this works a lot better and it's a lot more readable to other users that are coming in if they want to make some adjustments to your quiz. And this gives you the ability to have a lot of dynamic different quizzes but pulling in and using that same code. So we have done quite a few updates to this and originally here we're just doing a console log out and we're consoling log out uh, all the JSON information here and up here we didn't really change very much actually we didn't change anything at all uh, so the code is going to work as it was but now it's going to be a dynamic JSON file and this is um, this is great as well if you've got multiple quizzes that you wanted to build out and all you would have to do is set the JSON here and possibly make some adjustments to the variables you can also place the variables in the JSON file uh, so if you had po more possible answers or any of these other items that you want to change around uh, so changing that JSON file is going to actually change the result and the quiz format so that's all you would have to do to get an entirely new quiz using that same template so I'm just going to remove that out because we don't need that anymore and um, so what we're going to do, just going to go over to that page right now, open up the console, and you'll see that that JSON content is actually getting pulled out. And we see that um, initially when it launches, it launches that array. So it's got the three objects within the arrays. 
and each object has its key and its value associated to it. Uh, so, and again, it's a lot more readable format. So we've got answer one, answer two, answer three, answer four. The correct one is going to be three. So if we go here, we get it correct. And the same thing for the next and additional answers. Uh, so we're actually um, able to see all the different values that we're seeing and pulling in. And then here we're just listing out the answers. So we can actually remove out or comment out all of this because it's not going to be necessary for the functioning of the quiz. Uh, so the, another thing that we've added here is length of object. So the same thing that we did in the previous lesson where we added in a length of an object. Uh, this makes a little bit more sense now with the actual objects that we're using because uh, we do need to specify the length of the available um, quiz objects. So we can see here that we do list out three different objects within this array. And so we're getting that value and we're turning a value of three. Uh, so if you had uh, another row of questions, so I added that in. All I've done here is I've added another row of questions and as long as I'm following that same format within the JSON data and we've got the ability to add in additional stuff here besides the quiz content. If we had more dynamic information besides the quiz content, we could add that here within this JSON format as well and pull that through. Uh, so that could be for setting some of these values or variables if the need be. So now when we reload the page, so I uncommented that object so we can see a listing of all the different objects that are coming through. And we see now we've got four possible questions and we've got all the answers, we've got all their images. And as we can see here, when we go through the quiz, we've got actually four questions now. And the quiz, again, it doesn't complete until I actually do the submission. And it does uh, bring in that answer dynamically. Uh, so it's pulling in and it's working um, dynamically now where we can add in as many questions as we want as long as we're keeping it within this JSON format and then we can change around the JSON file that we're pulling in as long as again the format is the same. Uh, so we did have to go through and update all of these my quiz that were available so these uh, my quiz lengths and we've just replaced those with the length of object uh, so that was one of the reasons why we had to pull through that length as well and then looping through here uh, this was uh, there's two different ways to list out objects so one we can do something like this where we've got data quiz we've got the current page dot image but if you want to make it dynamic uh, so here we've got a and we're just doing i plus plus one so this gives us all of these values, these answer values. So we'll do A1, A2, A3, and A4, because we didn't want to actually manually list them out, uh, which we could have done if we wanted to just list them out. We could do something, the same format that we're using up here, and we could list out A1, and we'd get the response for that JSON A1. But that wouldn't allow us to loop through it and change it. Uh, so we had to set up the object within the square bracketed format. And this essentially, it's the same thing, uh, but we do have the ability to increment those values and add that A plus one value. So we get all four values that we've got here, or all four possible key, key values that we have there. And then we can, with those keys, we can return the actual values that are associated with those keys. And then the rest of it, um, there wasn't a lot of changes again with the code. So we're doing that capitalize here. We've got the maneuver movement. Uh, we've got the ability to end the quiz and move next. So we've got all of those functions are still the same. And um, it was only really the change in objects and using objects instead of arrays. So I hope that answers some of your questions that you've posted, as well as uh, some of your questions that you've add, asked. And as well, we've got um, 
this is uh, now an external file so if you did have this file you hosted somewhere else you could pull that through and if you had to parse through the JSON uh, you're able to do that as well um, if you want to call to it using Ajax uh, so we've got to have some these files locally uh, so we want to keep these files locally because uh, we're not actually using Ajax but um, because that's beyond the scope of uh, what we're going through within this lesson but again with using JSON this opens up a lot of possibilities and a lot of things you can do with the dynamics of the quiz and using JavaScript to pull through that quiz content